Hey, good morning everybody. This is your friend, your brother, Derek Day, and uh, coming to you again to uh, share a, a little bit of motivation, uh, uh, you know, just something to get you going during the day. Um, I'm really excited. I'm, I, man, I just, I stay excited about what God is doing and, and how he's, um, he's reshaping uh, his church. He's reshaping the body of Christ and he's reshaping it into the image of his dear son. And in doing so, he is revealing over and over and over again his unconditional love and grace to his children. And, and so that said, I want to ask you a question. Whom do you love? This is a very, very important question because whom do you love will dictate how you treat others. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 46, Jesus talks about loving our enemies. And this is really, really critical because how you treat an enemy will ultimately dictate how you treat friends. I mean, how you really treat them. Because if you treat your friends, your the people whom you love well, um, and you don't treat enemies well, you really aren't loving. I, I hope you're following me because the thing is, is that it is, it is the, our ability to love those who we deem unlovable that dictates whether or not we are truly disciples of Christ. Because you can love who's lovable. If you if you love someone because they have the same ethnicity as you or they have the same political affiliation as you or they are the same denomination as you or the same uh, faith or religion as you, anybody can do that. And, and that's why uh, Jesus said that um, that even the Gentiles do that. In, in other words, he was saying that you know anybody can love the lovable, but who loves the unlovable? And this is what should set us apart from everyone else. This is what should set the body of Christ apart from any other system of faith, any other religion, any other belief, any other ideology. It, it should set us apart in that we love those whom the world deems unlovable. Because I'm going to tell you something, and this is going to be really, really hard. And this is a line in the sand to everybody in the household of faith. If you say that you are of Christ, but you hate someone because of their religion, or you hate someone because they hate you, <laughs> your discipleship is suspect. Your discipleship is challengeable. Because if you, Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. He's not talking about just having love for believers. That's easy. He's not just talking about having love for other Christians. That's easy. What he's talking about is having love for those who are unlovable or who you think are unlovable. Because in reality, see, here's the thing. Watch this. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world. He didn't say for God so loved the Christians. He didn't say for God so loved the Jews. He didn't say for God so loved the holy and the righteous, the sanctified, the holy rollers. For, for God so, no, he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It is because God loved those who didn't love him while the world was still at enmity with God God shed his love abroad in the world in the form of Jesus Christ man that is really powerful that's really powerful and, and so listen when when we start talking about you know well we don't want to do for this group or we don't want to do for that group because well they don't believe like us or they don't look like us or they don't talk like us do you realize that we are uh, we're putting Jesus back on the cross. Are you catching this? We're 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 crucifying our Lord all over again. 
Because the very people that he died for, we're dismissing. He died for all. He didn't die for the suchy much. He didn't die for those who, uh, who are going to just slavishly follow him. No, God loved the world. And he wants to reconcile the world. And the only way that he's going to reconcile the world is for us to demonstrate his unconditional love and grace to everyone. So when, when, he, when he shares it with us, we demonstrate it with others, then they get to see God's unconditional love and grace. And they begin to fall in love with God. And they begin to fall in love with Jesus just as we do. This is really, really important. I, I, you know, I, I can't stress this enough. I can't emphasize this enough. It, it, listen, just because someone hates us because, uh, you know, they, they think America is the great Satan or they, they hate us because uh, we don't speak their language or they hate us because we don't acknowledge their prophets or we don't, whatever it is, I'm going to tell you something that those who hate you, you need to love more. We need to love more. We need to be sharing this love, this unconditional love and grace with everybody. It, it, there should, you should be so full of God's unconditional love and grace that when you walk into a room that somebody should say, Woo, what happened here? Uh, did, did, did somebody walk in with a new perfume? Did somebody change the thermostat? Something people should acknowledge that something happened when you walk into the room. And when you walk into the room, your peace should come with you. And your peace is the peace of Jesus. That when your peace comes in, that his peace comes in and it changes things. And that when people are, are feeling at odds with someone, they're feeling at odds with the, with the world, that you should be able to come in without even saying a word, just by your mere presence, that you are a carrier of the kingdom of God, that you come in and change that atmosphere. Amen. I, I, some, I'm so grateful for all of you that are joining. There's so many names popping up. I can't, I can't go through them all, but man, it, it's like, when, listen, it, you, uh, someone just says, uh, not walking in God's love is evident when we, when we devalue what God loves. That's absolutely true. God loves humanity. <laughs> People are created in the image and likeness of God. And, and God doesn't, I'm going to tell you something. Let me, let me just say this real quick. Let me tell you, let me, y'all come close, come close. Watch this. God doesn't love anything more than his creation. He doesn't love anything more than people. Nothing nothing. God doesn't love anything more than people. You know, you people say, oh, well, God loves his law and God hates sin. No, I'm going to tell you something. God loves people more than anything else. And we need to be sharing that love with everyone. Everyone. Everybody. You can't, if you're a disciple of Christ, you do not have the luxury of not loving. You don't. I'm sorry, I hate to bust your bubble, but you don't have the luxury of not loving. We have to love, we have to love those who love us. We have to love those who persecute us. We have to love those who curse us. We have to love those who even want to kill us. Because I'm going to tell you something, at the end of the day, the only thing that is going to change the condition of this world, the only thing that's going to change the, the enmity that man has with one another is God's unconditional love and grace. And I could go on and on. I could spend, listen, I, when it comes to speaking about God's unconditional love and grace, I can talk about this all day. And if you know Derek, Derek can talk. Okay. But I'm not going to go on. I'm just going to say this, that if you are having trouble with your love walk, if you are having trouble with loving people uh, based on some characteristic or attribute and, and, and you want to keep them, and that's another thing, oh my God, that you want to keep people away from you because of some attribute, then you've completely missed the gospel. You have completely missed it. Amen. 
I hope that this blesses you. It's it's a challenging word on a Tuesday, but hey, you know we we've got we've got to do a little bit of uphill climbing, and and here frankly, I, I want to say this because you got to catch this that um, that life in Christ is swimming upstream. It is swimming upstream. Now, granted, uh, God gives us the ability to make it look effortless. But it's still an uphill swim, uh, swim because, listen, even a dead fish can move with the current. So are you alive in Christ? If you're alive in Christ, then you should be swimming against the current of the world. And someone should see that. Someone should see that. Amen. I, I'm, I'm thank you, everybody that's joined in, golly, I'm, I'm so blessed that so many people uh, have have joined in. Andreas, yes, please go ahead and teach this in Spanish and then tag me in it. I would really love that uh, because this is a word that needs to go out in as many languages as possible. You know, listen, God loves you as so do I. I swear I do. I, I, those of you, I don't even know you. Uh, for the many people, the hundreds, the thousands of people that will see this, I don't know you, but with my heart of hearts, I love you. I love you. And God loves you. And I'm going to do everything within my power, with every breath in my body, with every fiber in my being to make sure that I tell you, that I show you, that I demonstrate my love for you. And if, and, if, and if I can do this, if I can just convince people uh, that, that this is what, oh my God, it, just one person, one person today, love a stranger. And when I say love them, not just say I love you, because not saying I love you it doesn't mean anything. At the end of the day, that's that anybody can say that. But do something. Have empathy for that person. Be willing to walk in their shoes, to see things through their eyes. Have compassion for them. You know, have have concern for their situation, for their circumstances. Everybody doesn't have it as good as you do. There's somebody that's suffering. There's somebody that's aching. There's somebody that's crying today. Love them. Hug somebody. Feed somebody put shoes on something do something and I'm not saying that works is works is not is not gonna save you but listen if we have the the Holy Spirit dwelling in us then his fruit will abound in us it'll manifest in us it'll be demonstrated in us and through us amen that's it man I'm, I'm done I, I'm I, I like I said I could go on and on with this but God loves you and so do I. I swear I do and this is why I do what I do because I really want to, I really believe that it is God's unconditional love and grace that changes everything. Amen. Y'all have a terrific Tuesday. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, couple of quick announcements. March 11th and 12th if you're in the Phoenix area, you need to be at Agape Dominion Outreach 16606 North Parkview Place, uh, where Jeremiah Johnson will be coming in to minister to us uh, on Sunday, um, uh, March the 12th. On Saturday, March the 11th, we are going to have a, uh, a community symposium, which is yet to be named, but uh, we're going to have some awesome people coming out, and, uh, and we're going to be talking about how can we influence our communities with the revelation of God's unconditional love and grace. It's going to be it's going to be faith meets community and it's going to be exciting. You don't want to miss it. Then on March 25th and 26th, Henry Harris will be at Agape Dominion and he will be uh, hosting his Brother Henry and You television show uh, interviewing me about my book Deconstructing Religion on March 25th, which is a Saturday and on Sunday he will be bringing the, the, the breaking the bread of life and teaching and preaching for us and we're really excited about that. So March is going to be an awesome, awesome month and if you haven't gotten a copy of Deconstructing Religion, get out to Amazon.com and, and get it. You can get it in paperback or you can get it in um, in Kindle version. But get it. I promise you it is an easy read and it will uh, absolutely change your view of religion. Amen. It'll deconstruct religion for you and reconstruct your help you reconstruct your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, God loves you and so do I. I got to go. Stay blessed. 
and happy Valentine's Day.